a lot of my friends keep sending me advice on how to take care of my body. Somebody else sent me messages how to take care of my, my emotions. And I'm telling people, I, I, I'm not looking for it. I'm not seeking it, but thank you. And I thought, well, you know, I have some ideas about the body and mind and the spirit as well. And I thought, well, let me share what I've learned in my 76 years of life. And I call this my, my, my diet, my diet for the body, mind, and the spirit. And so I got about roughly 20 things that I try to include in this diet, things that you should do or should not do. Starting with number one on this list, sleep. Sleep is the essential. Without sleep, the rest of all this stuff, just it's not going to matter. You're going to have problems. So if you're out there and you're on a machine at night to get sleep or you're your consciousness is filled with worries and doubts and fears and anxiety. And uh, you just, you can't get to sleep no matter what you do. Take whatever remedies seem logical and work for you. Go to a doctor, but you need sleep. So I, I don't recommend sleep medicines, you know, the, the, you know, the sleeping pills or, or drugs of any kind, but whatever it takes, because if you're not sleeping, you're not shutting down this mind and this body, and you need that. You need to escape from this world of troubles and problems and crazy news and all kinds of stuff going on out there. You need that time. So six, seven, eight hours, whatever your body works best at. But if you're getting 20 minutes of sleep an hour or 10 minutes and you're awake, over and over and over again, then you're never getting any deep sleep. So I'm gonna leave the remedy how you find that sleep up to you, but you know you need sleep. So don't push yourself to the ends, find a solution. Number two, kindness and love for, your, for others. So how, what's that got to do with anything, right? You guys say, what do you mean? Being loving, kind to people is healthy? Yes, it is. When you're out there serving others and loving others and being kind to others, you benefit more than the person you're helping. You got certain uh, uh, chemistry going on in your body that you, you create. When you're doing good things, you feel good. So when you're helping with a charity project or you're helping somebody uh, just on your own, nobody knows nothing what you're doing, but you're extending a smile, a helping hand, a kindness, whatever it may be you're actually helping yourself. You're creating mental, physical, and spiritual health within yourself. So be kind and be loving, starting with yourself, okay? Because you can't give away what you don't have. Number three, which I learned late in life, uh, after having kidney stones several times, uh, gallstones, stones in the salivary glands, I mean, Talk about getting stoned the old fashioned way, right? You just created this problem because you don't drink enough water, fresh water. I used to believe that, hey, when I'm thirsty, my body will tell me to drink. You know, you're thirsty. Oh, okay, it's time to drink. You can't wait till you're thirsty. That, that, that just is a bad indicator and it's too late. The common sense is now is that for Every 100, every 100 pounds you have, you should be taking 50 ounces of water. If you're 200 pounds, you should be taking uh, 100 ounces of water. So it's like a half ounce for every pound you have. So if you're 150 pounds, you should be taking 75 ounces of water every day, pure water, not counting coffee and booze and uh, all kinds of other things, juices, pure water, half ounce for every pound. Once I started doing this, my skin started getting a little better tone and, uh, and I, felt, I felt healthier. My dry eye problem went away. Um, and I also discovered from reading books that diabetes, heart disease, and kidney stones and all these diseases, they can almost all be traced back to dehydration. The individual has not for a long period of time done uh, enough hydration of their body. So suffice to say, uh, 
the body creates stones, for example. It accumulates, it's not getting flushed out. So for personal eliminate, elimination of your body through your, your intestines and everything, more flu, you know, fluids are good. And uh, for moisture skin, for all that stuff. And for brain activity, you don't have enough fluids, enough water, the brain gets dehydrated and you have problems, okay? Uh, number four, and this is gonna sound odd, but scientists have now discovered and for many years, now decades, and the Japanese in particular, that laughter is actually healing. Having a sense of humor and laughing can actually take critical patients with stage four diseases and create healing within them. There's something about being able to laugh at yourself in the world and lightening up the spirit. Even smiling helps. But laughter has been found to actually be a healing exercise. It's like a medicine. So don't get so serious about life. Or if you get a disease, oh, yeah, I got this disease, then you, you never smile or laugh again. No, laugh, smile, be happy. These things are all part of making you mentally, spiritually, and physically healthier. Forgiveness. Number five, without forgiveness, you're a miserable person. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be ridden with anxiety. You're going to have anger issues with all these things. Affects your blood pressure, uh, stress levels in your body for the heart, the lungs, all the organs. Uh, even your skin tightens up. Believe it or not, forgiving others is not about the other person. It's about releasing you from this hostage situation where your emotions are locked up and, and are owned by the other person. You're giving away your peace to this other person because you hate them or you're angry with them and you won't forgive them or whatever it may be. But start by forgiving yourself. Forgive you first and then forgive others. If you don't forgive others, um, it sets in motion so many negative things. So always start forgiving you. And I'm asking people, don't have to forget what happened. If there's somebody in your life that's really done bad things, abused you and stuff, then you should stay away from that person. You know, that if they conned you once, they'll con you again. If they abused you before, they'll abuse you again, more likely. So don't such, you don't have to be in their proximity. You don't have to be near them. You don't have to go up to them and say, hey, uh, forgive me. You know, I, for, I forgive you. Like, no, don't, don't play. That's the ego. Forgive people in your heart. And let it go. Pray for them. Love, love them. Give them some. Don't have to forget what they did, but you forgive what they did. Whole different thing. This little simple act of forgiving them actually makes you mentally and spiritually and even physically healthier, okay? Forgiveness. Number six, nature. If you're not out in nature every week, every day if you can, every other day, whatever, you, even if it's a walk in the park in the city uh, or your backyard, if you got a nice backyard, even small little areas where you're around a tree and flowers and grass and birds and wild rabbits or deer, whatever it is, nature is healing. Nature is healing. That's why someone tried to fall asleep and they, they listen to one of these long recordings, endless recordings of, of the ocean, of a stream and a waterfall and all these little nature sounds and night sounds <coughs> actually helps them find sleep. But nature is God's vitamin. It's there for you. So, all right, so nature has its place. And when you're in nature, absorb it. If you have shoes and, and you're in an area where you can take your shoes off and put your feet in the ground or the grass or the sand on the beach, do so. They say a certain amount of grounding. 
of the body's energies with with the earth is a good thing and uh, I, I believe even in the ocean water or a lake even that water grounding is, is beneficial it's it's all there to serve you helps to smooth and heal your heart your mind and your spirit nature number seven is about not doing things there's certain negative things you, know, you could do like use of tobacco drugs alcohol addictive addictive products of all kinds they're not going to help you they're going to age you physically they're going to age you mentally and spiritually they're doing some damages so i don't want to give anybody a lecture on you know don't drink this don't do this because just know that drugs age the body alcohol ages the body even though in the old days I mean just years ago they used to say oh a glass of wine every day an ounce of alcohol you know keeps you from getting heart disease well they're finding now that any amount of alcohol is not good for you what i'm telling you is moderation if you have to have one moderation but it's not good for you it's not a health food so just keep that in mind so moderation in everything i mean a moderation in popcorn and peanuts and and uh whatever you're eating moderation a little bit of this a little bit of that moderation keep it simple keep your keep your body as your temple but don't do all these negative things to it smoking i don't need to say much more about that that's not that's not health healthy at all okay all right so number eight loving and serving god however that feels to you whatever that means to you if it means going to church and mass and confession and and, and doing your prayers every day and, and meditating and whatever it may be it means serving people loving people and seeing god in all it's all part of making you mentally physically and certainly spiritually healthy if you're seeing god in all people animals nature all of it it's all god all made by god once you get that attitude and you feel god's love you have purpose if you have no god or no spirituality in life it's very difficult to remain mentally spiritually and physically healthy you have to acknowledge that there is something out there you have to acknowledge there's something greater than you god love and service to god whatever that means from your perspective number nine complaining you want to get old quick you want to get old quick start complaining moan and groan and oh my god i'm a victim this is happening to me this is happening to me this is happening so don't don't go there no one wants to be around a victim uh everything's happening to me you're not a victim everything happens in your life for a purpose so when you start looking at it that way then you'll see there is a purpose and sometimes all of us have things happen in our life it's not just Oh, nothing ever bad happens to all the good people. No, something negative happens to everyone. Parents die, children die, wars happen, diseases happen, accidents happen, uh, financial problems happen. Everybody's going to have something different on their plate. You're no different than anyone else. It's how you handle it. So don't complain. Whatever happens, great, move on. What do I got to do to work on this? How do I how do I accept this and deal with it? What do I learn from that? Don't complain. Number 10, it's about gratitude and appreciation. If you're going through life and you're not grateful for what you have, that your God the Father has given you, you don't appreciate the gifts that you're given. If you got a roof over your head, that's a gift that many people in this world don't have. You know, it's uh, in the Ukraine right now, there's people's houses are destroyed. They have to leave everything they own behind except for a bag, you know, bag or a, 
or two of clothing, they had nothing. Be grateful for whatever you have, whatever it is. Grateful for your health, grateful for your life, grateful for your parents, grateful for your job, whatever it is, accept it, love it, appreciate it. So gratitude is heavy. Somebody does you a favor and helps you and gives you, appreciate that. Thank you. It's never out of place. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to those that help you. Thank you to the ultimate giver of all, God. But thank you. Number 11, just don't waste your time worrying. Most people spend their life worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow, what may happen later on this afternoon, what happened yesterday they can't control or change. And if stop focusing on just live this moment, deal with what's happening right now. But worry doesn't affect any change. Nothing positive comes out of worry. Nothing. And I also have one other thing. I tell people once in a while, maybe it's a good idea to take a fast from the news. You don't need to be watching the news 24 7 and hours a day repeating stories about all the world problems and how everybody hates everybody and this guy's lying and this guy's cheating. And focus on your own personal self, your own welfare, your own family, your own neighborhood, your own community. Focus on what you have control over and what you can personally change. You'll find it's a lot easier. All right. Number 12, always think of others. It's not about you. It's not always about what you need, what you want. Others out there, so truly serve them. Truly think about others. Okay. Simple. Don't have to go a lot of explanation on that, but you're not alone in this world. You're not an island. Number 13. Be honest. I mean, really honest. Honest with yourself. Honest with your spouse. Honest with your family, your friends, your boss. When you're doing your taxes, whatever it may be. Honesty. Not hiding for anybody. Don't got these great secrets. Be honest. Live your life as if it's fully in view of all. Got nothing to hide. And you'll find yourself comfortable. And you'll find yourself not worrying as much and you can sleep better. So be honest. And value, it's no value friendships. Value friendships. When at my age, I'm looking back at a lot of friends are gone. The ones I have left, my old friends, they're not making not making any new old friends. Your old friends, they're eventually all gone. Hopefully you're one of the last to leave, but old friends are the best friends. So don't discard them. Nowadays I see people and they don't value friendships. It's like if a guy puts a, a post on Facebook that uh, it, it's pro-Democrat or pro-Republican or crazy talk or whatever it may be, that's your friend. You know, name's a subject you guys shouldn't talk about, but you don't want to beat somebody up for having a different opinion, a different religion, a different way of life. A friend is a friend. There's more to life than politics and religion. Focus on those areas that, that you both have in common. Life in general. So be kind to your friends. Forgive them. If somebody's truly a friend, they can make an error. They can make a mistake. You forgive them. They're a friend. Let it go. But if you're upset every time one of your friends has a different opinion of something and you, they're disowned, they're out, they're by, boom, unfriended, they're gone. All of a sudden, you're going to lose half your friends. Not everybody agrees with you. Not everybody agrees with me. But I'm not going to lose a friendship over somebody's religious or political beliefs. Okay, so just something to think about. Be 
moral. What does that mean? That means if you're keeping your, your sanctity of your marriage and the sanctity of your children, in other words, you're not violating the moral codes that are going to inflict pain and, and mental, emotional just, you know, grief to others around you. Lead a moral life. Okay, you don't have to be a saint, but there's certain things you don't go down. If you're married, you shouldn't be out committing adultery. Sorry. If you don't love her anymore or love him anymore, file for a divorce. Leave or work it out. But you don't do things that are going to cause pain and suffering to others. So, moral. Make the right choice at the right time for the right reasons. Guided by your heart, by God, by love. I don't want to beat that one to death. Number 16, take walks. I was talking about nature a while ago. Well, when you're in nature, it's good to sit and all that kind of stuff, but you need some, you need some movement in your life. So take a lot of walks. Walk around, walk around the town, walk around the park, walk around the lake, walk around the city, walk wherever it is. And open your heart and your mind and observe all you see and you do. It's a way to exercise for old people in particular without having to buy any equipment, join any gyms, or uh, getting hung up. So walking is cheap. It's easy. And it gets circulation going back in your body. Number 17, do not overindulge food, sleep, hobbies like computer games, all these things where you overindulge, especially eating, uh, has an adverse effect on your body, your mind, your spirit. It's a time and a place for everything. It's even a time and place for games. Time and a place to eat. So that's why you have a cookie or a cake. But you don't go crazy on these things. Keep everything in moderation. Keep it in control. Number 18, I'm combining that with don't overeat everything. We're talking about moderation again. I mean moderation in all things. Hobbies, overwork. So, oh yeah, I'm working 20 hours extra overtime a week or I'm working 80 hour weeks. I've, I've seen that. You know, and that will go on for years. And meanwhile, while you're excessively at work, you're not spending time with your children while they're growing up. Or of your spouse. So don't overindulge. Moderation is the key. Number 19. I talked about this earlier, but sometimes it's good to take a fast from the news. Don't watch so much. You don't need news in your life every day. I know in the 1940s, we didn't have a television set. Early 50s, we didn't have a television set, never watched the news. And in the 60s, okay, about the time I got hooked was when JF Kenny assassination, it was three, four days I was glued to the television. It was news. But we have people that are watching the news, especially during this pandemic, every day for the last two and a half years. News, 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 news. If you couldn't sleep before, you're certainly not going to sleep now. So what's what? You see the headlines, you know things going on in the world. You know what? If you're not paying attention to it, it's not going to change what's happening one way or the other. Bad stuff's still going to happen. Good stuff's still going to happen. You don't have to know about everything in the world that's happening. Every terrorist that blows up, everybody gets shot someplace. It doesn't make your life better to know that. If you have a need to know, great. If you don't have a need to know, move on. Take a fast for the news. Lastly, but not least, keep physically clean. Wash your body. Hygiene. That also means the mind, what you put in that mind, dirty thoughts, reading terrible magazines, you know, watching movies of serial killers and rapists. And I mean, think about all the crazy stuff you feed. You're feeding your mind. You're dirtying your mind. You're dirtying your heart. So when I say be physically clean, I mean physically, mentally, spiritually. Don't harbor anger. Towards and resentment towards others or envy. 
be clean. Like take a shower. Just it just cleans it all off. All right. That's my 20 things for my special diet for the body, mind, and the spirit. And uh, and I and I hope that you find some value in that. I could lecture on any one of those points, which I didn't want to overdo. It's really not what I think or what I believe. It's should be what you think and what you believe. But from your point of view, you should accept and adapt and follow something similar to that. God bless you. Thank you very much.